Hey guys, Squirrel here. Have you ever followed a classic car down the road at night? Have you ever noticed how dim the taillights can be? We're going to work on a possible fix for that today with the Mustang. The old style light bucket and incandescent light is pretty common on a lot of older cars. They don't have good reflectors inside and, and the, as the bulbs and the lenses age, they get dimmer and dimmer. This here is the original bucket from my 1965 coupe. I don't know why it's these colors, but that's not helping anything, right? Uh, let's see, here's the the lens, right? Original plastic lens. I think it's original. And here's the grill. This grill is what everybody would say, you know, makes it the, the Mustang tail light. Uh, I want to keep the grill and the lens, right? But I want to chuck this old bucket and not use this incandescent light anymore. I know I can buy LEDs on the internet. They're kind of expensive, around $200 a pair. I know there's also the $50 ones, but I'm kind of worried that they won't last as long as those $200 ones, right? And I don't like the way that those $200 ones look where you can see each individual LED through the lens. So here's what I'm thinking. Truck and trailer lights, you know, the, uh, the LED ones you can buy from uh, just about any parts store. Uh, these things are made to last and they're bright, right? And they're inexpensive. This one is a, it's not a name brand because I cannot find the brand on it anywhere. I, it's got a price tag on it from years ago. It's $11.99. That's not bad. Uh, this one I got for free. I got a few of these for free. They're kind of old and they're kind of something in there. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'm not going to use amber, obviously, for the taillights. But this was what I started with. I wanted to use something inexpensive but bright and last a long time. There we go. Truck light. Uh, I wanted to do this for a lot of years now. The problem is I did not want to make sheet metal bucket to mount this in. It does not sound like fun. I like metalworking and, and welding and things, but the thin stuff where you want a nice shape and, you know, it just, I, I don't like that. I'm glad that the body on this Mustang is in pretty good shape. So recently we got a 3D printer and I figured, hey, we could actually make some functional parts for this with the 3D printer. I'm not a, I wasn't big into 3D printer idea, but my wife really wanted one. Uh, once we got it and we started tinkering around, uh, I'm like, hey, we can make something work. I started looking around YouTube and I found some people that are printing some real cool automotive stuff. The one I'm really inspired by right now is Grindhouse Performance Engineering. Uh, I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, you should go over to his page, check out uh, his content, real good content, and he's building a killer LS swap Z car. He uh, printed some really cool parts, including a headlight housing. So I'm like, why can't I print a tail light housing? So here's what we came up with to start with. Just a test. It turned out good. I'm using Fusion 360 to design this stuff. Uh, I'm a SolidWorks guy. So learning Fusion 360 has been a little tough. It's not the friendliest program and there's some kind of weird things in it. I prefer SolidWorks, but I can't afford that. So this worked okay. I can get the results I want. Here's the first test that we did. It slides in there real nice. Uh, other than the, um, the little oops gap dimension I got wrong there. It holds it real nice. I put some little clips and I'm going to ditch that idea actually. 
uh, but it turned out really good and I was impressed at how dimensionally accurate it was so I'm, I'm happy with that uh, that turned out well enough that I went for the big one uh, had some printing problems mostly the uh, first layer not sticking well this um, if you can look manage to look at it down the edge is uh, I don't know if you can see that on that camera it's a little warped but it's fine for this the other problem is it's a little tight but it looks pretty good it turned out good my goal was to make a custom part that looked like it could be a mass-produced part so by the time it's printed in a black filament not gray like this and uh, we put some reflective material inside there I want it to look like it belongs in the car like someone's gonna go walk up and say where can i buy that but you can't but when i'm done this is going to be on thingiverse or something i'll put something in the description about where this is going to be available for you to print and which light it fits i'll probably have two versions this one um I might be able to figure out what light this is, but I'll give you the dimensions of the light. Uh, and this bucket will be on there. And then the final, the final version will be on there as well. Let's talk about design. This bucket here was designed this way for manufacturability. It's got studs integrated into it and uh, it's got the threads for the grill to hold on into uh, integrated into it and really that's just for manufacturability right all the smart bits are in, integrated in here this just has holes the back of the car just has holes you just need your nuts and your screws and you drop this in from the outside and you hmm, put your lens on and there you go rock and roll it's fast so I realized that I don't need to follow that form factor. I can do my own shape and uh, mount it from the inside. This can go on the inside of the car. It doesn't have to go on the outside like this. Okay, that makes things easier because now I can clearance this, you know, to the maximum size of the existing hole in the tail panel. I don't really want to cut out the tail panel any more than I have to. Uh, and then by the time this goes on, we'll have some separation here between the light and the lens. And hopefully that will diffuse the light better. It's way up here at the top. It has integrated reflector, right? Uh, and I want to get light through that. That's the other thing about the existing LED kits is they light up this center area because these two strips are meant to be reflectors. Okay. I really want this whole thing to light up nicely and bright. All right, where are we at here? So today we will test this out. We're gonna see what the incandescent light looks like and we'll see what this LED looks like. We'll spin the cameras around and point them at the back of the car. Um, one thing I may upgrade to later is a diffuser layer in here, similar to what you see in the kind of the old school uh, fluorescent lights in an office, that kind of gridded diffuser, uh, maybe to help this out, right? To spread, spread the light out so you don't see the individual dots of the LEDs. Uh, maybe we won't need it. The other thing is uh, some reflective tape in here. We'll try that out, see if that makes a difference. And let's see, a brighter light. I'm probably not gonna use these lights, even though they were cheap and I have them, they're old. You know how plastic goes. Uh, the longer it sits around, more brittle it becomes. I found some on Amazon, similar size. Uh, truck light or, or uh, Grody brand uh, that have like 20 LEDs in them. That's my goal. 
I, I know I'm spending more money what at the same time I'm trying to save money but only 20 or 30 dollars a light and they're probably gonna last for the whole time I have this car all right Where's that fucking? So one thing that this bucket does that's helpful is it acts as a spacer, right? Uh, kind of holds the lens tight. Fluff, fluff of something here. Keep that lens from rattling around. Alright, this bucket is way rustier than the other one, um, but the other one, the uh, electrical connections don't work, so I kind of had to rig this up uh, just to do whatever it takes to make it work, right? Let's just test it. Okay, so I noticed earlier when I was messing around with this that the tail light feature doesn't work here, but the brake light does, so... Let's give this a shot. We'll get the battery going. And <clears throat> that. Let's see. Here. Oh, no. Well, that was dumb. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, and this one's black because. They're probably going to be blacked out. I wanted to see what it looked like. There we go. Okay, just like that. So that's a fairly even light pattern. You can see the hot spot in the middle of the... Uh, the regular bulb. So let's wire up the other one. That's the tail light. That's the brake light. Let's just have the tail light on here for a second. Ow! For a second. Okay. So I like that that's the lights across the lens more even. That is nice and bright. Well, it was. So these are brake lights only, remember. The tail light on that side does not want to work. Let's go turn the lights off. Oh, that one went out. Let's make one last attempt at getting it to work. You can see a difference in the glow on the wall that the LED is much brighter. Yeah. Whew. My vote is LED. All right, guys, there you go. You got to see what the comparison was between the old 
incandescent and the more modern LED. Uh, the next step will be ordering the lights I'm actually going to use for this car. And then, like I said earlier, when the design's done, this will be available for whoever to print off and uh, use on their car. Uh, let me know what you think. Which one looks better? Do you like the old style, uh, you know, the old style incandescent glow? Or do you like the bright LED? As always, I want to thank you for stopping by the workshop. If you made it this far in the video, if you could go ahead and give a comment, that would be much appreciated. We'll see you next time.